Now remember, for, for functions on an asymmetric interval, it doesn't make any sense to talk about whether or not they're even or odd. But we can extend them to a new larger function defined from minus L to L in such a way that the extension is even. And so the even extension of F is denoted F sub E, like even part. And the way it's defined is it's defined to be exactly like F uh, on the positive part that, that already exists over here. And then uh, on the negative part, uh, we define it by f of minus x for, for negative values of x. So for negative values of x, f of minus x is going to be, um, sorry, for negative values of x, minus x is going to be positive. And so if we're out here at like, you know, minus 1, then we look back to positive 1 and say, oh, okay, the value was there, so I should put the value there and so on and so forth, and so we end up with something that looks like uh, maybe that. Um, meanwhile, for the odd extension, the odd extension of f is fo, um, and it looks like uh, uh, f on the positive part, but then we extend it to the new part of the domain, so for negative values of x, minus x is going to be positive, and then we just take the negative of that value. So we do the same kind of thing, uh, come out to some, some point in, on the positive. So if we want to know what's going on here at, at x, then this point is going to be minus x. So we look at the function value here, and that's what we give over here, except we go down because we throw a minus sign out in front of the f. And so we're going to get something that looks like maybe uh, this one. OK, so given an f, we can construct an FE and an FO such that the FE and the FO are even and odd functions, uh, respective, respectfully, respectively, respectively. Um, and then we also have the even periodic extension. And so the even periodic extension of a function that started out only defined on uh, some asymmetric interval, um, this is going to be, now we'll say, so it's, it's the periodic extension of the even part. And now this is going to be a function defined on all of R to r, because when we extend by periodicity, that, that ends up extending the function so that it's now defined on, on the entire real line. Um, so this is, this is the, the 2L periodic extension of the even part. And then we have the uh, same thing for the odd part. Oh, sorry, I totally misspoke. For the odd periodic extension, my God, it's so easy to get them mixed up. Um, and so this one, we look at the two, uh, the two L periodic extension of the odd extension. All right. So so let's take a look. So um, what's going on here is that since the the cosine functions that we're looking at. Um, since this guy is even and uh, 2L periodic, when, when you add them together, um, and, uh, sorry, and I should say as, as a function defined on, on all of R, um, when you add all these things together, you're going to get something that's even and 2L periodic on all of R. When we build the Fourier cosine series, we only care, theoretically, about what's going on between 0 and L. But we actually have to take into account what's going on outside as well, as we'll see. So what happens is the Fourier cosine series of F is actually converging to the even periodic extension of F in L2. So it's a classic case of what, what happens in Vegas doesn't actually stay in Vegas um, because the stuff that's going on outside really influences what's going on inside the interval that you uh, care about. So similarly, the Fourier sine series 
for f is trying to converge to the odd periodic extension of f in L2. And so this accounts for some of the behavior that we saw uh, when we looked at the Fourier cosine series and the Fourier sine series um, for the identity function f of x equals x. So if we look at the Fourier cosine series for this function, uh, it's going to look like this. Let's see. So we start with um, the function x, right? Uh, and then we extend it evenly. So we reflect it around the uh, horizontal axis. Uh, and then we extend it periodically. And it looks like that as opposed to the uh, Fourier sine series for the same function. So for this one, uh, so we, we started with the same whoops, um, the same function right there on, on 0 to L. But then we extended it uh, in an odd fashion. Um, and then we extended that further uh, by periodicity. And so let's see, so now I'm going to take a shift of this entire thing. And it looks like this. And, and so in fact, there's these little hot points. Uh, there's jump discontinuities, so it's going to converge to the, the mid value uh, on each of those. So we have something very different. Um, in, in particular, you see that the, um, the, the Fourier sine series is not continuous. Now, if I drop in the plots for what the, um, uh, the partial sums look like for the few, first few uh, partial sums, you can see that the Fourier cosine series is converging very quickly, uh, as we saw before. And it's due in, in large part to the fact that the Fourier cosine series is continuous. And this is not a coincidence. If you think for a moment um, about how the even periodic extension is formed, you'll see that it's always going to be continuous. Uh, a con it's always going to give you a continuous function on the entire real line. Um, now, if you look at what's going on with the, uh, uh, the the Fourier sine series, you can see that there's that Gibbs hop that's always happening, that, that overshoot phenomenon, where it's overshooting here and like undershooting here, always by that same amount. And that's coming from the fact that it's discontinuous on as a function on R. So even though you think you only care about f as a function between 0 and L, you actually have to look at its appropriate periodic extension to all of R and see how the Fourier series is converging there in order to understand what's going on. Um, and if you think about it for a bit, you'll notice that the Fourier sine series for F um, is going to be uh, continuous on R um, if and only if we have that uh, F of 0 and F of L are both equal to 0. Otherwise, it will fail to be continuous. So you, you need to have it be the case that it's equal to 0 uh, at the origin, or else the odd extension is going to fail to be discontinuous. right? If we had some function that you know came like, uh, say, say, whoops. Yeah, sure. Say we just had some function that looked like this. Then the odd periodic extension would necessarily have some, some jump right here, and it would fail to be continuous at the origin. Um, Similarly, if you have something that's, uh, that's not equal to 0 at L right here, then you're going to have that jump discontinuity when you do the periodic extension part.